Skips have sent us a skip to do some science in. So what I'm going to do first is show you how to calculate exactly how much stuff you've got so you know what size skip to get. It's a simple volume integral. No, Eve, 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 what are you doing? We don't need calculus to order a skip. But I'm a scientist. Calculus is what I do. Yeah, but this is easy skips. Clues in the name, they make it really easy to order different sizes of skip. I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, don't skip this bit. So it must be the easiest way to order a skip in the world, right? All you've got to do is go to easyskips.online, put your postcode in, choose a skip size, just three to choose from, nice and straightforward. Choose a skip location on or off street. Gives you one price, and then you go check out and pay. Name, address, drop off date and time, any special requirements, place order. And that is it, it's so simple. Oh, that was easy. I told you. You know what though, you can do science in a skip. We're gonna demonstrate resonance using this skip and this Bluetooth speaker. So we're gonna place the speaker on the outside of the skip, facing the skip wall. I'm then going to put various frequencies of sound through the speaker using a frequency generator on this phone and we're going to measure the amplitude at various frequencies on the opposite wall of the skip on the inside. So what we should find is that when we generate a frequency of sound which has a wavelength equivalent to double this width we should get a resonance effect based on the constructive interference of sound waves in this cavity. And what that means is we should measure a higher amplitude of sound at this skip wall at that frequency. So we're now generating 115 hertz from the speaker and we're measuring the amplitude using this app at this side of the skip. So I'm going to change the frequency and we're going to see what happens to the amplitude. But I'm going to have to shut up while I do it because otherwise this is just detecting my voice. On the left we have a spectrum analyzer showing an amplitude peak at the generated frequency and the lower graph is a time series showing the spectral intensity over time. So as we lower the frequency generated you can see that upper amplitude peak getting less. So you can see a couple of harmonics of the frequency there as well and it sort of gets lost a little bit and you can see it's now a lower amplitude. If we raise the frequency back up you can see that the amplitude measured on the spectrum analyzer is also increasing and we get a peak at 115 and if we raise the frequency up further we can see that that amplitude peak starts to reduce again on the upper side. So let's bring the frequency back down just to make sure that we're not imagining things and let's see if the amplitude increases and we can see that it's creeping up there until at 115 we get a peak at around minus 20 decibels. If we continue to reduce the frequency, we see that the amplitude is dropping once again. So we're getting a clear peak at 115 hertz. So we can explain this using the equation that relates frequency and wavelength. Oh, so I can do some equations. Yeah. The fundamental frequency of the standing wave across the width of the skip occurs when the width of the skip is equal to half of the wavelength of the sound wave. Now we can turn this around and say that that means the wavelength should be twice the width of the skip. To then get our fundamental frequency, we take the speed of sound in air and divide by this wavelength. For our skip, this gives us a frequency of approximately 115 hertz, as you saw in the experiment. So whatever you do with your skip, remember that easyskips.online is the quickest, easiest way to order a skip. And it's your skip, you can do equations if you want to.